Andrew Haley from Wirecast Telestream, and I'm going to give you guys a quick tour and update of what's new in Wirecast and Wirecast 9. So right now, out now, is the Wirecast 9 Beta, which you can get on the Telestream forums, and it has some cool features, including support for this new X-Keys controller, which is amazing. And you're probably noticing that there's a ton of shots here on the Wirecast shot list here. So we've got the first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer. As we bring in sources into our Wirecast projects from scratch, the X-Keys controller will automatically detect them and assign them to a key on the corresponding layer. So uh, obviously if we have layer one there, I can quickly tap the first shot button on this keyboard at that point. It's gonna select that. We can just go down and do the same thing on each layer and compose our shots. So now we have all five selected just by tapping five buttons on there. We don't like something, we can tap the clear layer and take off that bottom layer. It's really up to us. All right, at that point, it's just take it live with your transition button. Over here, we have a basically a arrow to the right, just like the go button up in the interface. And so by tapping that, we will go live with whichever transition is automatically selected. Okay? But what's unique about this demo in particular, and this version of Wirecast 9 that we're running, is the PTZ control. So I'm going to pull up the PTZ controller. And you can see, uh, let's pull up a quick shot here in the preview. I'm just going to grab um, sort of this left wide here. And you can see it under the PTZ controller here, <coughs> we select which source the camera's coming in, and then it just has an IP address for the camera, which it, and then it auto assigns a VSCA address for it. And we can make sure that it's connected, which it is. And then we have this cool map view where we can actually control the camera just by clicking around in our map view. We can even dial it in a little bit if we want to up, we got to go up. We just use the arrow keys. And then if we want to save it as a preset, we can actually save it as a preset right within the controller. So that's what we've done here is we've actually saved <clears throat> a number of presets on the uh, Wirecast shot list. And each one of these is just another shot of the instance of this camera, but it's connected to a preset that we've already set. So just by switching those shots in Wirecast, we should be able to pull up the presets. So now on the controller, I'm just tapping, you know, shot one, shot two, shot three, and the camera's doing what it's supposed to do and jumping to those presets that we've already controlled and set up. And the final thing that we're going to be uh, launching in beta next month is our restream and captions. These are really cool. You know how you want to stream to, a lot of people want to stream to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Periscope, all of them at once. But the problem is your computer starts to bog down when you add that many destinations, it's got to encode a lot of outputs, or you might not have enough bandwidth. You might have only a you know, five megabits per second upload link. A lot of places in America, and Northern America, have that problem. Their upload stinks, right? So the way you solve that is you use a restreaming service. And one, there's a lot of them out there, but now we've actually built it right into Wirecast so that just by adding your destinations, you want to add, say, we've Twitch here. We're going to add Twitch and add a few others. You still get to access your username and authenticate and log in, but all you have to do is check the enable restream option, and then Wirecast will send that to Telestream Cloud, which you can do from the cloud. You just sign in to uh, get a cloud account on Telestream Cloud, and Telestream Cloud will automatically detect which destinations you've chosen in Wirecast, and you only have to send us one stream, and we'll take care of the rest. And it only adds like 10 seconds of latency on average. And then the final thing you can do with that as well is add automatic captioning and closed captioning through speech recognition. So if you check the enable live captions, you can see we've now added a little closed caption to the Twitch output. And we can do the same thing on any of our destinations by enabling restream and enabling captions. And captions will automatically go out to any of the destinations if you've got it on one that you're restreaming. So it's a really easy way to get awesome live captions and get low bandwidth and low CPU on all in one program. So that about covers all the new changes for Wirecast 9. A lot of this is either in the beta already or will be in next month's release or any of the betas we lead out, uh, we release up to that point. So reach out to us at telestream.net or Wirecast at the team or tweet, uh, tweet at us or you can also find us on our Facebook page. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them or head over to the Telestream forums and post your questions there. And thanks for watching and definitely check out Wirecast, guys.
Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.